as I say, we're going to do a little scene in Ben Burb, very, very close to where I live. And it's uh, let's take a look at the scene. It's the Gate Lodge at Ben Burb Castle and Priory. And you'll find that at this time of year, the trees are starting to turn a little bit russet here and there, but they're also getting very dark. The greens are becoming almost blacky greens in places. So we're going to have a, a bit of a diffusion of light and dark and russet tones within the trees themselves surrounding this sunlit a gate lodge house built out of red brick. Not actually a window in that gable end wall of the, the white cottage, but I've put one in there just to add a little bit more interest and a bit of, of a feature in there. So we're going to have the road leading in. I've put a wee bit of masking fluid already on the white lines in the middle of the road. Sometimes I leave the white lines out, but in this case I thought I would leave them in. Start with a sky and for that I'm going to use a mixture of uh, cerulean blue and Windsor blue. I want to keep this a nice sort of subtle sky blue, not too dark. And I need to get a second wash and I'm going to use light red for that. So I'll put that three brushfuls of water in there and a wee bit of light red. Now it wouldn't do any harm at all if you wanted to and I'm just going to do it for the sake of it. I'm going to put a wee bit of crimson into that as well. Sometimes it's nice just to add a wee bit of crimson to that light red. It makes it a wee bit more interesting. That'll do. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going into this red colour. That's the second one that I mixed. And I want to put this just sort of peeping up here over the trees in the middle. Now I'm just bringing that blue in. I want to leave quite a few big white clouds in this. So, and especially over this side here. A big sort of cumulus type cloud there. And then with what's left on the brush I'm going to pull up into that underside of the sky so that you'll see a bit of blue just peeping through at the bottom there. Another wee bit in here. But as I say I don't want to overdo that. That's nearly enough. And I'm just going to dry the brush now. Take all the excess moisture out and I can push that across and just push back some of that running blue that's coming down there. But as I say I want to keep this sky really simple because there's a lot going on in the foreground. And that should be quite dilute. You see, look, it's not too dark at all. So I'm just going to pull that through. One brushful should go a long way. Right back to the entrance there. There's going to be a big dark shadow at the gate entrance cast by trees here on the left hand side. But we have to put the, the roadway on first. I want to put this on in a couple of streaks coming across here. There we go. So Start outside the painting and pull that in like that, just in a couple of nice um, sweeps across. Bearing in mind that there is going to be a shadow on there. We're not really worried about the shadow yet, but there is going to be a shadow there. But it helps to give a wee bit of darkness to that side just before the shadows will go on later. I'm going to put a wee bit more crimson in there. Maybe a cross like that. Now I'm going to use the big brush and dry it out like that. So there's nothing in it. Look at how open the brush is. You see if you if you look at that from above, you see how, how broken that brush is. And I'm going to pull this across like that. Just very, very gently. I'm trying not to take the colour off again. I'm just going to use that three quarter inch brush there to pull a wee bit more into that corner there. But don't start inside the painting. Always start outside. Because it's coming from somewhere. This is a beautiful little village, Ben Barbet. It's, it's very quaint. It's built around an old castle that was down in the Priory grounds and you, there's a, a river runs through the centre of the estate. It's the Blackwater River and there's, there's a very old castle, a medieval castle, overlooking the river. And this is quite high. You have to go down quite a steep hill to get to the castle and then the castle is sitting up on a promontory looking over the river. So the river is very, very low compared to where we are here now. But it is a beautiful place to go for walks and very peaceful and calm. The Priory building itself is a big red brick building now in the centre of the estate and that's, uh, it's, um, it's like a monastery. It's the home of the Serviet monks or Serviet priests. Now that's the foreground done and I'm going to mix three washes for the brick and using the number eight brush I'm going to put out one, two, three, four 
washes with the number eight, or four brushes with the number eight brush. And I'm gonna make a nice orangey brick color. I might just tighten that shot. So I always use the biggest brush that I can, and I'm going to put this around that archway. You see here, just around that arch. That's fine. That's all of that done. Now we're going to mix the roof washes and we have two cerulean blue and alizarin crimson. We've done mossy roofs before, moss covered roofs before, but it's not just going to be as dark as I normally would do because I want to keep quite a bit of light on this. So I'm going in there with a couple of brushfuls of water. So we're going to come down now from the top of the roof, just filling that space. I don't want anything too strong here because I just want it to be given a slight impression of maybe a wee bit of moss on the bottom of that roof, but not much. That'll do. Just a hint, that'll, that'll work its way in and it'll start to lighten as it dries. Not too much on the brush and I'm going to start just below that ridge and pull that across. And don't cross that line that I've just drawn, otherwise I run the risk of bleeding into the first wash. I'm going to bleed some of that green into the bottom of that. Now you wouldn't really say it's a green, it's a greenish wash. Just slightly green there. Just to represent a wee bit of moss growing on the bottom of that roof. That's lovely. Just a nice subtle, you see you have to remember that what's going behind these houses is really really dark and you want that house to pop out. I'm going to drop this blue grey in now, just like that, willy nilly, that's another technical term. Coming near time for shadows, the house should be well dried by now, always tested with the back of your hand and I'm going to put one, two, three, four brushfuls of water in there, use French ultramarine medium strength, not too dark, not too light. Getting the strength of this shadow right is going to be the trick. So that it's showing up on the brick but not overpowering. And that protrudes quite a bit, that roof coming out from the wall. So it casts quite a strong shadow down that area there. But it allows, if the shadow is Dark enough to make a difference, but dilute enough to um, allow the other colour to shine through, then it's perfect. Now I'm going to do the window panes before I move on, because that really will punch out uh, some of the detail in the house. I'm going to tighten that shot again, so they get right into all of the areas of the house that need the darkness. Leave the frames pristine white. It always looks better if you have the contrast between the light and the dark. Benburb Castle. It was a very strategic uh, castle in the history of Ireland at one time. It was um, one of the O'Neill strongholds and O'Neill's were one of the main families in Ulster at the time. There were several skirmishes over history, you know, and the O'Neill's were always a thorn in most people's sides. Very common name still in Northern Ireland, actually, O'Neill. It, it came from the, the old Irish name, the O'Neill. They say they were the followers of Nile of the Nine Hostages. Who, you see that? You see how I'm putting that darkness in there? And just letting it bleed through. It sort of bleeds into the wash that was there. But you should come across. Anybody that hasn't been here, come over and I'll show you the whole thing. There's lots to see and do. Now these ones are smaller, so I'm going to do most of this with the dark. There we go. Just means holding your breath for a moment and don't talk too much. Mm. 
Right, let's see. We have a lot of foliage washes here. Using the knife, I'm going to put in some branches into that dark foliage area, this area here. I don't want to make this too, too much of a feature. Just a wee bit there, a bit coming out of there. Don't want to overdo it though. So I'm going to trail this down a little bit on the underside like that. Let's widen out and see how we're getting on. I think we're near done. We just have a few dark edges to put on. I think that's shaping up really well. Does it look like Ben Burb cow? Now I'll use the rigger. There's Jonathan Ross called it the wigger. I'm up. And, and there we're going to the right. And here we're going to the left. Left on the left, right on the right. I need a wee bit of dappled shadow on the left hand side. There's trees out here beside the church. That'll do. Now, let's um, frame it up and uh, get it nice and straight. Now, there's no birds in it, but I need to put them in. One up here. One there. Here. Are you a question, Cahill? Yes. Uh, Judy has just commented that the lamp post wasn't rubbed out and I just noticed that, so I'm going to do that. The very last thing I do. And rub that like that and the lamp post should come off. Lamp post shown there now. And uh, I'll take off the tape. And I think. That is not an easy painting to do, I'm going to tell you that now, but you have the path through it and uh, if you take your time getting those darks against the lights, it is actually a brilliant exercise in creating contrast. But a lovely scene it is. But um, that's Ben Burb Gate Lodge to Ben Burb Castle and Priory in a pretty little village not far from where I live. I hope you've really enjoyed it folks. I know that I've really enjoyed doing it for you. It's been uh, exciting to do, I'll tell you that, with all the different colours in the trees. But I hope you really enjoyed watching. It was a pleasure to do it for you. Have a go at it yourself and let me know how you get on. And hopefully I'll see you back again for the next one. Happy painting. Bye.